Hello everyone, and welcome back to a new episode of Xbox. We were about to try a competition to grab files and take them home. On to the third of the tournament battles in each match against a better programmer than the last? Question mark? They haven't really done anything interesting. Like a video game, you know? It makes for an easy narrative structure. Deadlock's Domain. Okay, cool. To win this battle, you must grab files as they spawn in the central hosts and bring them back. Reading the file register will tell you the ID of the most recently created file currently in that host. Size limit is 3. So what does this guy do exactly? Oh, he actually does something sort of reasonable looking. He goes visits all three of these somewhat regularly. I'm not totally clear on what exactly his logic is. He goes here, makes a copy, and visits that place. He makes another copy and visits a different place. Let's go. I think I see. Um, this first copy he makes... Why does it... Oh, it comes here, then it goes here. It drops it off. No, but it dies. I thought maybe it didn't die. It came back here and went exploring again. Yeah, nothing ever seems to return from his main host. Hmm. Well... nice to know if there was some way, like, if you need to make more... I don't know, he's probably not killing us, right? Um... Like, if, if, if we had to worry about him killing us, it would be kind of interesting to figure out, like, how to decide how to respawn, because if you attempt to create a new exa and there's no room, you've actually just destroyed one of your existing exas by yourself, which is like sort of catastrophic. Um, I think that we should just make three exa one for each of these rooms and have them go back and forth as fast as they can. I'm like, that's probably going to be fine for this little toy. Um, now, can I actually... No, you can't send two X's through at the same time. I don't know why sometimes it seems to me like you can and sometimes it seems like you can't. Um, so what that means is I can actually save some time by just having one exit instead. Um, and having it um, copy, let's say, 800 to X, replicate 801. Uh, let's just call this Go, I guess. Here, we link X, grab hash file, link minus one twice. 
drop and link 800 and then just jump back to go, right? Now the trick is going to be, what happens if we each try to grab the same file on the same tick? That I'm not so sure about. Okay, so we sort of operate independently. He grabbed the same thing. And his guy is doing something very similar, but we got to this one a tiny bit faster, I guess. doing something sort of inefficient by having one dude who never moves around, but just spawns multiple things, I guess. Yeah. Seems pretty simple. We lost 20 games! Wow! When did we lose one? I'm just waiting for when this win count first shows not a totally, you know, the same number twice. And then I'll, uh, ah, we lost game nine. Okay. Why? He got this file first and then my thing died. I see. And I actually only have one XO while he has three. He managed to kill two of mine? Well, he didn't kill them, just like we sort of timed out awkwardly. What if I just go murder his main dude? That should win every time, right? His strategy sucks and he just stands there? If I just walk over and kill it... <laughs> uh, okay, let's try a new solution then. Uh, link... 800, Link... 799... Kill... A bunch of times, right? Like three should be plenty. Because at least one of those will get his, um, his, his master node, right? Maybe the other two will get his slaves. I guess that would be fine, actually. I only need two of these. He either has one slave left, which... No, I guess if both times I kill slaves, I'm sad, right? So I, I, I do want all three. Now, I guess in principle, he might survive that. What happened to me? I died here. I somehow went... Oh, I needed to link 800 again first. And he's not carrying a gun, so I know he won't kill me. <laughs> Got him! <laughs> Alright. Uh, that should do it. Um, and then... I'll just let that one die and have another call this the, uh, the old kill bot, and um, this guy is just going to do what the other one did. Uh, in fact, let me just copy this and paste it into the old solution instead. Um, so 
it took me a little longer to get started because he couldn't make his third copy until my, my first bot had, had died off. Alright, we got him. 100% rate. Curious how enthusiastic anyone, everyone gets about the battle. Something about competition really energizes the spectators. It makes me wonder. How to take advantage, probably. Do you see that Craven? Yeah. Not always after every advantage. Ruthless competition is a human thing. And now Deadlock is talking about uh, how he lost to Moss. Okay. Extreme League Baseball! Retrieve extreme baseball statistics and use them to determine the best player. That sounds like a baseball thing. You should be glad I've been reading up on sports. Remember when I said I'd figure out the money situation? I've designed a new rating system for extreme baseball players. It's based on a multi-vector analysis of all the stats I could find. In other words, I have a way to predict winning teams that's pretty much infallible, no doubt. A few bets here and there and I'll be rich. Oh, look at this. There's a baseball field over there. This is adorable. Um, what a very nice looking network. The host's active and penalty contain files that correspond to extreme baseball players, along with a directory file that contains a list of those files' IDs. Okay, got it. Each player file contains their name and the following statistics in this order. Oh my gosh, and we have to like do math. Create a file in your host with the name of the player with the highest score using this algorithm. Players in the penalty host should be ignored. Does that mean we should just not go to the penalty host at all, or um, that if a player is in both the penalty and the active, then we should make sure not to see that. Like, are there any IDs in common between these two? see any. I guess we can just look at like 199 has uh, 241. Oh, it has just a list of all these things, sure. But do these have, uh, this is the active ones. Glenn, Chris Glenn Christensen <laughs> is on penalty. Those Pierce Evanson. Alberto Brozas, don't think I saw that name. Dan Boggs. And Heath Carmichael. Yeah, so it sounds like we're just supposed to not visit this host at all yet. Um, honestly, like just doing this math is kind of hard for every number, right? Wait, I just realized something about this power one. I didn't, I didn't need to copy anything into M because the fork already has the right stuff, right? He, he was forked from us and therefore has the correct values in him. So this should also work, yes? Yeah, look at them go. All right, well, there's four instructions that you need. Cool. All right, back to 
Back to the puzzle we were working on, Extreme League Baseball. So it's sort of hard to have like ugh, how do you even if you have one exa whose job is like reading through the list of players and he doesn't put that player list down let's say then he wants to broadcast locally to this guy the other the other exa in that host who's reading player data but that host that, that exa won't really have a very good actually kind of interesting, I think. So we have inside of the player registry, and we have two exes, right? One who's reading the player list and broadcasting it over local M. is reading player IDs off of local M and then transmitting their stats over global M. He switches modes. Then some host in some some exa in my main host can receive that information and do actual math with it. Now, this operation is still not so trivial to perform based on the order, right? So like we could take B A, Z A, A P B and add them, and then divide by three. That's pretty simple. Um, I guess we can view this as a, a, a sum of three numbers. Each computation can be performed in isolation and then added to, say, T, some other register. Um, And then you can start a new computation on X and add the result to T. That seems okay. Now we have remaining the question of how to compute a maximum of some things, which is pretty easy. You just compare the two values and test if it's bigger, right? Uh, but... So you can't do that all in one host, not, not the host that's doing the math anyway, right? Um, because it doesn't have room to save two things. Uh, we could, I suppose, if we were willing to put it into a file, 
What's our goal? Exactly. Create a file in your host with the name of the player with the highest score. Ugh. So we have to send the name as well. It's easy to send the name. It's just like receiving it and doing something with it is hard. Um, so we have to like save it somewhere. I guess we want a file, yeah. Um, we want the host who's computing the max to just be hanging on to a file that has the current max on it, right? Or the exit, not the host. And... And then when he gets a new value, he checks what's in the file and updates it as appropriate, right? Fine, but the termination condition is still a little tricky. My plan originally with these two exas here in the player area was for the, the one half holding the player list to just check whether he's at end of file, and if so, broadcast a bogus player ID uh, as the next one to read, in which case uh, this guy would die. Uh, and that's all fine. But... Then how do these guys, these two who are still out here, die? I could kill them! <laughs> I guess I could just kill them, couldn't I? They're sitting there waiting for instructions, and this one bot, Exa, knows that the, the problem is solved. And coordinating with these guys is going to be hard, but they've already written the solution to a file. Right? Well, except maybe they haven't. Because this guy will detect that he's at end of file before all of these operations are complete. who's in charge of reading stats to go and, like, kill off the other bots. But what if my... the guy who has the player list first killed off the one who's supposed to be reporting stats and then just broadcast some totally bogus stats that cause the other guys to explode, right? Um, so what's in this player list file again? Just IDs. So it's a little bit annoying because he doesn't really have access to any keywords. If he could broadcast a keyword, these guys would try to do math on it and they would die, right? Ah, well, we have the same problem, I guess. Uh, which is that... When we, if we try to broadcast some bogus message, that broadcast will still go in before the real messages coming from this guy for the last player are done. So we kind of do need this guy to be responsible for killing everyone. The, the one who's reading player stats, because he's the one who knows when it's safe to end the processes in the root host.
So we can't just broadcast a bogus file ID to him. We have to tell him, hey, it's time to be done. And then we'll let this guy die off. This guy will come out here and kill these two instead of sending the real messages. And then he'll self-destruct himself. Okay, that seems like a workable approach, I guess. Um, and I'm actually, for like the first time I can remember, gonna have like just four actual separate exa not created by replicating at all. Um, because they all kind of want to do different things, and there's not much point in having them share any code. So this could be ID, this guy will be player, reader, stat. Um, this guy's gonna be um, math, and this guy's gonna be max. So the first thing that max is going to do, what do we want to write the player? Oh, create a file with just the player. Okay, so in addition to killing these guys, the problem is the max, in order to know what the max should be, we need the actual number, which is the max, right? Um, as well as the player's name. So I was thinking that we would write in the file the player number and the, or the player's stat number and his name, his or her name. Um, but then if we just kill the guy holding that, uh, we'll have an, a problem. I guess it's fine because the no the the exa who will be in charge of coming back here and killing everyone. Um, pick up the file and delete the maximum from it. Although, it may well be that the exa responsible for computing maximums can store the current maximum in a register and only store the player's name in a file. Um, I think that that is probably okay. So let's write max first. It seems relatively simple. Um, we simply test whether m is greater than x. x is where we're storing the stat, and m is the stat we are getting. Um, and we will demand that the math node send us the number twice. and then send the name. Right? Um, if it was not greater, then we just want to throw away the next two values that we get. Let's jump to same. Same to be void m, that's the number again, and void m. Jump to top. And up here we'll mark top. Otherwise, we copy m into x and then copy, oh hang on, let's make a file. Then copy m into f, we're getting the player name this time, and seek to the beginning of the file. Minus one should be fine also, but this is clearer. Okay. Uh, top. There we go. I think that's all this guy needs to do. Now, we have the math guy. His job is going to be sort of interesting. Mark top up here. Um, 
his job is to receive some data. Ah, let's make this guy mode global. Local, please. Um, it's a bit awkward that he would be receiving the name first. So let's not do that. Let's make him receive the name last, and we'll just have the player reader skip over it, give all this stuff, and then go back and give the name. Um, so he's in global mode, and he copies um, M into X, that's our BA, adds M to X, adds M to X, divide, oh, gotta say where to store it, divide x by 3, storing the result this time in t, that's our running sum. Now we copy m into x and multiply m and x together, storing the result in x. Divide x by m, storing the result in x. Add x and t, storing the result in t. We're now done with everything from here to here. And finally, we just need this stuff. We um, copy m into x, subtract x and m into x, multiply x by 20, storing the result in x, and finally add x and t together into, let's say, t. I don't think it matters. We've now computed the stats for the current player. And we will now copy m into x, and that's going to be the player's name. So now we'll switch into local mode. That was a command I remember in the manual that switches the global and local mode toggle um, to transmit to the guy who's computing maximums. And we will send him copy uh, T over M twice. And then copy x over m, the player's name. Switch back to global mode and jump to the top. Um. I wonder. Uh, th there's still like this potential of a race condition if the last number that we send, or let's say the last, we send the name, right? We send the name of the, the last player to here, and this guy does some number crunching on it or whatever. And then this guy says, by the way, the, pro the program is over and you should murder everyone. <laughs> um, he may then come back here and kill people before uh, this guy is done updating the file. But maybe instead of executing kill operations, he could just broadcast a symbol on local M. Both of these guys are expecting numbers right away, and so that symbol will cause them to die, right? And importantly, we're pretty sure that they'll have received, they'll have already done all their message sending. Uh, so they'll be maybe doing some internal processing, but they won't be sending any more messages, I think. Yeah, I think we should be there slow enough for that. Although, honestly, like... 
Wait, why are we copying? Oh yeah, I see. What's... Uh, we're copying M... Ah, yes, that's the maximum number. Into X. Well, it would be a bit better if we sent the name first, right, in the second go-round. That way, it's safer to interrupt these guys one tick sooner because the file is already updated. The max isn't updated, but that doesn't matter because the game's about to end. The program. Okay, so there might still be some lingering race condition, but it should be easy to resolve with like a no-op or two or switching to a local broadcast of a symbol instead of a kill or, or whatever. Now we have to write these guys, which are sort of interesting as well. We want these to both start in local mode. I believe. So let's let's do the uh, player ID reader first. It seems pretty easy. Link 800. Uh, mark player. I don't know. Mark next. No, we don't want to do that yet. We need to grab 199. What we will do here is what exactly? Um, copy f into m, test end of file. If not, then jump back to next. If so, we are at the end of the file. We need to send this person one last message, the kill switch, <laughs> and then die off. So let us copy minus one to M and then die. Meanwhile, this guy goes to Link 800 and copies. Copy um, M into. Well, I don't even have to do that, right? We'll just grab M. And then toggle modes. Seek forward by one, skipping the player name. Hang on. Before we do this. We want to test whether, ah, yes, right. That's the problem with just grabbing M, is that if we've been sent a kill message, we don't want to just explode. We want to go talk to the other guys. So let's instead copy M into X, test X equal minus one. If so, T jump to kill. Otherwise, grab X and switch to global mode to broadcast these stats. Seek one to skip over the value we don't care about, the player's name, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times. Copy F to M. And finally, seek to beginning of the file, and copy F to M again, and drop the file. Yes. Uh, then switch back to local mode and jump to next. All right, this is probably not complete. But I've sort of written all the things I meant to write, and now I'd like to see how it behaves. So, ID is sending 219. This guy has received it, and it was not minus one. So he grabs file 219. And begins broadcasting stats. 
goes back to the beginning of the file, broadcasts the player name, drops the file, and goes back to local. And uh, he's now ready to receive new instructions. And I'd like to see how far along these guys have gotten in that time. Um, we're just now broadcasting the player name. This max guy is f jump to same. They were. We are not gonna save the same player. Wait, hang on. Yeah. Therefore, copy the player name into f. So we have now written the player's name. It would now be safe to interrupt them. And this bot has already not has has um, not yet figured out whether it's time to go out and, and murder everyone. So that tells me that um, we don't need to do anything fancy here. Uh, we can just in the kill spot we can link minus one twice issue a kill and that's all. I know we could just write kill kill, but this is clear about the fact that there are two X's we want to kill. Okay, so back to back to all this. We sent out all the stats and the player name. And how's Mr. Max doing? He's determined to score, and his file has a, a name in it, Dean Duncan. All right, I don't know. Let's hit play and see what happens. Although I'd like to an eye on how fast we're going through the player list so I can watch what happens uh, when the bloodbath begins. Copy F to M, is this... Well, he's broadcasting 215, I see. The pointer is here. He's already read F, but he hasn't sent it, so the pointer is here. So now he tests the EOF and says yes, and he wishes to broadcast a minus one. This guy is still working through a long list of stats, so he hasn't gotten the minus one yet. Um, yeah, and now um, that guy is already... We're down to three X's. The one who had the, the list of IDs is, is dead now. This guy has said, oh, time to go murder everyone. Goes home. These guys are all just getting ready for the next uh, step. But, nope. You're all dead. It looks like we did not succeed. Um, what is in this file? It is a player number? Pardon me? That shouldn't be happening. Show me what's supposed to be in this file. David Wright. Also, how did a player... How did some... thing other than... Uh, player's name get in that file? What's your problem, Max? I guess let's look at math as well. X has a... We sent... Yeah, so were they the same? No. Copy from M, which is Dean Duncan, to F. Copy from M, a max, which is X. And now... Wait a minute. Oh! I forgot to jump to top here. We voided... Two rounds of thing. I'm surprised nothing exploded earlier. All right, let's see how this is going now. We're getting ready to copy a minus one here. And what is uh, what is in my new file? David Wright. Amazing. 
All right, we got it. Pretty normal, it looks like. A little bit high on size and higher on activity than in, like, almost everyone. Still don't know what activity is. <laughs> okay. Oh. Okay, uh, hmm. Yeah, I assume you lost a bunch of money. Processing. It turns out sports betting is not, in fact, a good way to make money. You should have said something. <laughs> Better for you to learn on your own. Don't put this on me. This is all happening because I'm trying to help you. Let's continue. Cool. Well, that was fun. What? A war die line. No, oh, whatever. These guys are talking about who cares. That'll do it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.